Ladies and gentlemen, Shajar is finally here in Rise of Kingdoms. So today I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on her based on my first impressions, some of the reports that I'm seeing, and we're going to go over all of the pros, all of the cons, whether I'm going to be investing in her or not, and who I personally think should be getting their hands on Shajar. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Breaking out the Mega Well mug for the Shajar first impressions video, of course, that is down below if you want to get your hands on one quick plug for my twitch by the way i know a lot of you guys probably don't even know that i have a twitch account it's in the description i've been doing a couple of little secret live streams over there where i just connect with a small group of you guys so if you don't want to miss that and you definitely want me to see your messages your questions things like that you want to follow me on twitch with the notifications on that way when i go live you'll know and we can chat over there okay now shajar has been out for just a little bit at the time of recording this i don't know like a little over 12 hours or something like that as you can see I got her to 5111 I was testing out her mighty healing and just trying to see like what kind of damage you would deal with her and things like that and it looks like and from what I can tell it seems like the impressions that people are getting of her are that she is maybe a little bit better than people initially thought she would be and I think that's because the expectations were already low I think with mighty healing people saw that and thought what why why are we getting a healing archer not just one but two by the way and I am recording this before Cho Young comes into the game so that is probably going to play a, a little bit of a factor in my opinion of Shajar of course we're going to talk about Cho Young a little bit later because I think she's performing a little bit better than people thought and with Cho Young I think he will be probably her best open field pair or at least like top two because he has a five target aoe here with the healing which is insane but the initial impressions seem to be a little bit better than people thought at first however i don't know if that really changes my gut feeling that i mentioned in my most recent video where i talked about the entirety of gen 9 and i basically said like none of these gen 9 commanders for the open field at least are must-have commanders and that's for Shajar has not really changed I think maybe like maybe I'm slightly more favorable about her my opinion is slightly better about her now than it was a few days ago because some of the test results out of Shajar are decent now of course I only have her at 5111 so I don't have any test results to share with you guys personally I still am on the fence if I'm even going to invest in her at all but let's go over some of the pros that I have noticed with Shajar and I really am glad that they gave her the skill tree because I feel Feel like that does enable her to be a primary or a secondary i think if she was full support tree i mean support tree is more tanky and the rest of her build is very tanky so it would have made sense but i feel like the extra damage from the skill tree is really going to be nice in the long run but regardless with the skill tree that active skill if she's the primary is going to hit like a truck it is 2800 direct damage factor and the fact that it is skill damage as opposed to true damage or like with infantry they have smite damage etc or like with infantry they have smite damage etc everyone else in you know for archers for archer mains cares about skill damage right so if you're an archer main player and you like archers then you've built your entire account around basically skill damage right and i honestly most players have built their account around that besides infantry mains but regardless if you're pairing Shajar with somebody like Isong A for example 50 percent more skill damage that's kind of insane if you pair her with somebody like Asher Bonapal, we have 20 percent bonus skill damage here as well plus if you're running Ottoman Empire which Archer mains normally are then you get five percent skill damage there you get five percent skill damage from your formation the wedge formation right you get five percent more skill damage from the Twilight Fall city skin so there's so much synergy with skill damage and I I think that's why her as primary hitting like an absolute truck I mean she's kind of like I mean this this is this is a higher single target hit than Huo right I mean there's just so many ways to get bonus skill damage on Shajar with her having the skill tree as well I mean I feel like this is it's great right so the single target hit and the synergy with skill damage is a huge pro for her which gives her a lot of different things if she didn't have the skill tree then she probably couldn't really perform in the primary role as well and she might be doomed to be secondary to somebody like Cho Young forever so I'm glad that she has the skill tree another pro here is that her sustain is obviously insane I think she is the tankiest and most sustainable open field archer in the game right now 
that's no question I mean her healing factor is insane not only is it a high healing factor but it's mighty healing which is going to make it two three or more times stronger than regular healing but on top of that 35 percent of her health is insane and she takes 10 percent less normal damage and she takes 20 percent less all damage which is wild plus she has like bonus to defense and things like that plus the one time mega heal that she's going to get 5,000 mighty healing factor gonna be insane when you get that so in general her sustain and tankiness is insane and that's going to make her very good for game modes like Arc of Osiris right where you want to stay in the field as much as possible you want to stay alive as much as possible and also Canyon right Sunset Canyon Lost Canyon you're probably going to be able to find a role for her at least if you're an Archer main I'm curious to know how she's going to pair like Cho Young with Shajar I feel like this pairing is you know with the defense tree and everything I feel like this is going to be really good in Sunset Canyon we're gonna have to see how that actually plays out when he's in the game I mean like look we have upwards of 40 percent more counterattack damage here they're taking so much less normal damage as well tons of defense I mean it's it's kind of insane for those game modes Ark of Osiris and Sunset Canyon I feel like Shajar is going to shine another pro for her is she is supportive right not only is she every skill cycle only three second cooldown by the way every skill cycle is she going to be healing three nearby allies but if she's expertise she's also going to give them defense and more normal damage which is very very nice so not only is she able to deal large amounts of single target damage but at least she is supportive as well and so this is kind of where she seems similar to Boudicca Prime right I talked about this in my last video where we talked about Gen 9 commanders but Boudicca Prime has a decently high single target damage a debuff she has some healing she has some March speed like this it, I mean you know th there's no healing for your allies here but just the fact that you're debuffing the target makes her sort of supportive for the other armies that you have Kajar just hitting a bit harder getting some healing for your allies and also there's a March speed reduction here as well I feel like people are ignoring that because March speed reduction is everywhere these days but 50 percent March speed reduction for three seconds is a very strong snare all in all supportive nature of her she's like a tankier Boudicca Prime but also she hits a little bit harder than Boudicca Prime right just no massive debuff on the active skill there like Boudicca Prime has yeah great stuff there also not only is she tanky but the March speed here is beautiful this is something that archers have been struggling with lately especially with commanders like YSG for example these are really heavy hitters massive circular AoEs but no March speed at all right and even you know with Boudicca Prime she has 10 percent March speed which really didn't feel like enough everybody knows I mean you can remember back in the day when Boudicca Prime was like the latest greatest people would run her and like it's just it was so hard to make her super super fast it was so hard to make her just fast enough to even catch up with your other armies I mean infantry has a decent amount of March speed on a lot of their meta commanders now and they have the four piece set bonus on their equipment which makes them I mean just kind of by default they just have the ability to have a lot more base March speed there as well right so you know archers felt very slow they still feel very slow and so the fact that she just has a vanilla 20 percent on her kit at all times is great that's even better than commanders like Nebu and that's one of the reasons why I mean Nebu has AoE but besides that one of the reasons people love him is 15 percent March speed all the time which is great as opposed to Asher Bonapal, for example 15 percent March speed but it's only outside of Alliance territory so it is conditional so Shajar having 20 percent not conditional it's all the time she's going to be faster than most of the archers that you have in your lineup which is very very nice another pro for Shajar and we're going to talk about this a little bit more later but she is a wheel of fortune commander and this isn't normally something that I would consider a pro for a commander in rise of kingdoms like typically the acquisition method isn't something we usually talk about here on the channel because most open field commanders are on the wheel but when we talk about archers I think archers more so than any other troop type they do tend to branch off into some mightiest governor commanders even for open field fighting right we look at commanders like Nebu and we look at commanders like Ashurbanipal these are mightiest governor commanders that typically find their way into a two or three archer lineup for archer mains and so when you are comparing you know Shajar's open field performance to what you can you know pair her with also even Henry a lot of people used Henry in the open field as well I forgot about that and Artemisia like, like there's so many it's actually so funny I keep forgetting about these commanders but 
there's there's oftentimes we will see archers using mightiest governor commanders in the open field and so for shajar i think it's a pro that she's on the wheel because she's going to just be easier to get depending on the kingdom that you're in right some kingdoms many kingdoms especially if they're competitive they are going to be fixing their mightiest governor and rewarding those players in the kingdom that contribute a ton to kvk usually or there's nepotism or something like that right different kingdoms are set up in in different ways some kingdoms it's like a free-for-all right and that could be even harder to get your hands on the mightiest governor commander because then you literally have to just straight up compete with players who might really really want them right so i think that it is a pro for most players that shajar is on the wheel because you could just spin for her just over time casually get the 10 spin reward or you could spin to 100 get a lot of value there and so compared to other meta archers in the field the fact that she is on the wheel is to me a pro and the final pro that i want to talk about here is that you can effectively run her at 5551 right and this is something that we see with herman prime as well which is kind of beautiful we also saw this with Boudicca prime as well and it's kind of really nice for archers that they keep getting blessed with these commanders where you can run them at 5551 but the fourth skill here first of all a big chunk of it only occurs once per hour and i mean it resets when you go into your city but it's under 60 percent units remaining right and a lot of the times when you're fighting you know you're not really gonna you're not really gonna fight much more after that right so you know a lot of this skill doesn't matter that much the first 40 percent of your of your health of your troops i should say your troop capacity you're not gonna get anything from this bottom portion here and then the top portion is less all damage which is beautiful but just by unlocking the skill you get 10 percent less all damage taken i mean that's really really nice right you get literally half the value of this skill just by unlocking it which is very very good right so i mean for me like a lot of the value is in the first two skills and the third skill is where all of the support of nature comes from right because when she uses an active skill getting this from one to five it will bump the healing factor up from 250 to 500 so you double the mighty healing factor which if you guys have seen my video where we talk about the mighty healing formula even though this is a linear doubling from 250 to 500 the mighty healing factor itself is exponential in terms of how it relates to the regular healing factor right so a 500 mighty healing factor is actually quite good and when you consider the fact that it's going to be dealing damage right based on your heal strength as true damage every time that that occurs that is really good right now that's only when she's a secondary you're going to be dealing the damage otherwise if she's primary it's just going to be the healing factor but regardless I feel like a lot of the value is in the first three skills here and I would say like honestly probably like 70 percent of the value is in the first two skills and like maybe 10 or 15 percent is in the third skill and the rest is in the fourth skill the expertise is nice but I mean again when you compare like the fourth skill is the expertise in the fourth skill combined worth an additional 310 legendary commander sculptures maybe right and if you're an archer purist and you max all the archers then obviously you're going to do this but at the end of the day like it's a three second buff it's I mean 10 percent defense is only a little bit it's not that much the 20 percent more normal damage is nice if you're an infantry main and you're able to get this on your infantry commanders so it's nice but really I think if you wanted to you could run her at 5551 save those sculptures and I think you'll have a decent open field commander but now let's move on to the cons right and the list of cons is actually very short but the cons themselves are are really big cons these are really big down downsides for Shajar and and so when you look at like the lists it seems a little bit skewed in favor of the pros so you might think oh like this is a medic matter but the cons are actually quite big the first one can't ignore this no AoE right there's no AoE here on Shajar now if she's secondary then her healing the the sort of three troop heal is sort of converted into like a mini AoE right because you're going to be dealing true damage every time you heal those three targets so uh, but it's like not really AoE right because it's going to be dealing it to a target troop I don't know I guess it's I guess yeah I guess technically it's not AoE it uses your nearby allies to deal single target damage I guess right either way though no matter how you cut it there's no actual AoE on this commander whether it's circle cone half half circle whatever and normally that's not that big of a deal right I mean it, it is a big deal but if you look at commanders like Nevsky you look at commanders like Huo you look at commanders like William Wallace and Alexander the Great you look at commanders like Gorgo you look at commanders like back in the day even Boudicca Prime and Henry a single target damage factor if it's high enough doesn't necessarily make the commander useless again like with Huo for example and Nevsky like they are always used even though they're single target damage so this idea that like a commander is only meta viable if it's AoE I don't like that idea because there's just so many examples of it not being true it's just not true objectively but the downside for Shajar is that she's competing with a ton of archers that do have AoE and that's the big downside right 
right now archers for a, a two army lineup i mean you're looking at commanders like yugi leong you're looking at commanders like herman you're looking at commanders like Yi song you're looking at commanders like asher bonapal even commanders like nebu there's so many commanders here that are five target aoe not just three target but five target right in the case of yugi leong Yi song nebu and asher bonapal all of them are five target aoe which is insane right the only one that's not that's meta is a three target for herman normally like when you look at cavalry or you look at infantry you could say okay well you know just because it's single target doesn't mean it's dead in the water but it's a little bit of a, of a harder argument to make for archers in a world where they have so many aoe commanders so shajar's kit has to really outperform everywhere else to make up for the fact that she's not an aoe commander and i think you know if she was a cavalry commander or if she was an infantry commander this might be a totally different story but she's not she's an archer and so she's competing for a slot in one of your armies with other aoe commanders and that i think is a huge con for her also when this is the second con when she is the secondary she no longer gains the benefits of skill damage and that i think is huge for archer players in terms of it being a big downside because you look at some of the strongest commanders that we see for archers like Yi song ye 50 more skill damage you look at julia leong we have 20 percent more skill damage we have herman prime gives you 20 percent more aoe skill damage you look at somebody like asher bonapal and you're going to get 20 percent more skill damage plus like i said before ottoman empire gives you skill damage twilight falls gives you skill damage the wedge formation gives you skill damage there's so many ways to get skill damage and if you run Shajar as secondary you just completely lose all those bonuses right they just they don't do anything because this is true damage and it's not skill damage and so that I think is definitely a huge con and again it's especially a huge con for archers because archers are so all in on skill damage right that's a huge con for archers and finally this is a another pretty big con here is that the mighty healing is great for sustain it's great to keep you on the battlefield but it also is going to show up on your battle reports as making your trades a bit worse than you thought right and this is one of the downsides of shajar is that her healing is so strong that she's converting a ton of your slightly wounded units into healthy units and then they're going to get injured again and a portion of them are going to fall off from slightly to sev so while you're being supportive and you're being tanky you also you know especially if she's a secondary you're going to be taking a lot more sev wounds than a normal army and that is definitely unfortunate but not just for you for everyone near you as well and your other armies most likely the, the way that usually this works is when you have a buff that in that you know targets nearby allied or friendly troops typically the game will prioritize your armies so if you have you know let's say three four five armies in the open field and they're all next to one another hitting the same target which is typically how people fight then then your armies are going to be the ones that get this 500 mighty healing factor every time and you're just that's adding more healing to your entire lineup and that could cause you to take more sev wounds across all your armies or at least three of them uh rather than just shajar but i mean really we're talking about if we're just going to tunnel vision on shajar specifically her as a secondary mega mighty healing and that's going to make your trades look pretty bad and it's going to fill your hospital quite a bit right so those are the three cons that i wanted to talk about for shajar and i feel like those are really big cons you know you could and people have been doing this they're sending me these like 1v1 battle reports and i've seen like 3v3 battle reports and things like that and it's like yes those are it's great and and again you know especially in 1v1s healing is insane right and and that's why she's so good in things like suns and cannon because you're fighting to the death you're only hitting one target but like 1v1 results are just not gonna be how shajar actually performs in like a kvk scenario right so while we may see really good 1v1 or 3v3 reports or something like that when you're actually fighting in the open field and you you know check your battle reports you're going to look at the shajar reports and be like oh my god she healed so much that like i got way more sev wounds than i thought i normally would so that's a huge downside and for me i'm thinking i i probably won't be investing in shajar unless we see cho come out and just like break the game right somebody can, can you please comment down below am i saying this right is cho correct is that right am i saying this correctly i have no idea I, i'm thinking of like cho from harry potter right but i know it's like completely spelled differently so 
and anyway unless something massive changes with Cho's introduction which it could because he does have he does hit five targets and he has his own healing and he has a ton of defense he also has some March speed like, there's a lot on his kit that works in the open field and so it's possible that he could change my opinion on Shajar but as of right now I don't know if I personally will be running her and you know right now I'm only running one Archer March and the Archer March the best Archer March in the game in my opinion has not changed I think it is still Juge Leong primary with Herman Prime secondary but I was considering opening up my lineups to building a second Archer March I'm still thinking about doing that I'm probably gonna wait until the next Cav release I'll wait till the next Cav release if we get another like lukewarm just mid commander for Cavs then I'm probably gonna invest in a second Archer March in terms of like equipment things like that but right now I'm only running one Archer March and the Shajar doesn't look good enough to inspire me to run that second Archer March so if you're not gonna run Shajar as a single army right and, and that goes to anybody watching here as well like if you're only running one archer march shajar is not it's just not the answer like you're just not going to run her there's pretty much no reason to you know you've got new Leong, you've got herman prime that army slaps it's tried and true we love it it's supportive it deals a ton of damage there's no reason to change that right it is still the single best archer march in the game in my opinion so who should be investing in shajar well first of all if you're running three archer marches then i think she's a slam dunk i think it makes sense to run her even if you don't get cho you probably still want to get your hands on shajar because i think think you might be able to make the argument that you could bench either the Tamiris that you might have been running with Herman Prime or the Boudicca that you might have been running with I don't know who do people usually run Boudicca with uh, Nebu or something like that right do people usually do something like this I, I am not a uh I'm not an archer main so I don't know how people normally run the three army lineup here I think typically it's something like this right I think this is what a lot of people do although if you didn't have the Tamiris then you obviously would be running something like a Boudicca here which would obviously not be with Herman Prime it might be something along these lines if I'm not mistaken or maybe something like this I don't know either way no matter how you're running these things as an archer main you're gonna know better than me of course but I think you could make the argument that you would definitely bench the Boudicca or the Tamiris no matter who you're running whether it's Boudicca Prime or Tamiris I think you could make the argument that you would bench them for the Shajar and you probably would run something like this if I'm yeah if I'm looking at, at this right this is probably what you would be running here the massive amounts of skill damage on Yi Song Yang not only on his fourth skill but also his relic gives him 12 percent extra skill damage on top of all that you're going to be hitting them with a 2800 nuke on the active skill here and she's faster than Boudicca Prime this is basically the Boudicca Prime YSG combo from like what was that a year and a half two years ago but just better right I could see this being the three army lineup for sure so definitely Archer mains I think this is a must invest commander the real question is is there any excuse to run her in a two army lineup is she better than you know let's say let's call it this uh, or no let's say this is the two army lineup are you going to be benching anything here for Shajar the answer in my opinion is probably not right when you look at if you look at Ashurbanipal from like his kit in general you know the downside of Ashurbanipal is you do kind of have to expertise him if you're going to use him in the open field but if you look at his kit it just lends itself so well to what archers are already doing in the open field it's a 1500 five target AOE and you're dealing an additional 1001 target plus you're getting 20 percent attack and if you're outside territory you get 20 percent defense 15 percent March speed 20 percent skill damage bonus and 15 percent less normal damage taken plus the RNG on the expertise here which is actually quite good I mean he's just a generic massive AOE skill damage commander I just feel like that's probably a better bet for your open field performance than whatever Shajar might be doing but that's not where this ends right because one of the things that we have to consider again with Shajar is that she is a wheel of fortune commander and that's not something we can say about Ashurbanipal so for players who cannot get their hands on Ashurbanipal right now because that he's just not accessible to them then I think you might be looking at a Shajar YSG as your two army archer lineup and this is why I wanted to mention her being on the wheel as a pro for her because that's kind of the only reason that I could see people running her over someone like Ashurbanipal or over somebody like Nebuchadnezzar right even Nebu's kit in general I feel like is possibly comparable to Shajar's kit in general even though she's got a massive single target damage 
he still has a five target AOE, 15% all damage on the fourth skill. He gets vanilla, just a ton of March speed, a little bit less than Shajar, but still a decent amount plus defense. His kit's still pretty good for open field performance. But again, these two are mightiest governor commanders. And so, you know, if you're a player who runs two archer marches and you can't get your hands on a mightiest governor commander, then Shajar is your best pick, right? I, I would run Shajar over Boudicca Prime personally, even though the debuff on Boudicca Prime's active skill is very good. You're just going to be hitting them so much harder with Shajar than you would with Boudicca Prime, especially with the massive skill damage bonus on YSG. Those are the two types of players that I think should be using Shajar. First of all, you know, Archer mains that run three armies, of course, get Shajar. She's going to be great in the open field. I think she'll be better than Tamiris for sure and probably better than Boudicca Prime. But also, if you are a player who just can't get your hands on a Mightiest Governor, then, you know, if you want to run two Archer Marches, then I think this is probably the two Archer March lineup that you would go with. For everyone else, though, meaning people who are only running one Archer March, you're not going to run Shajar. And for those that have access to Ashurbanipal and maybe possibly even Nebu, then you might not run Shajar right that's just my opinion here you could argue about the nebu pick maybe you think she's better than nebu or not i i am not conclusive on that right now if you have access to ashurbanipal i feel like an expertise ashurbanipal probably better in the field than a shajar that's just my first impression based on some of the reports that we're seeing right now and also just to be clear i wanted to point this out one last time if you are running three archer marches then it is possible that your last archer march does actually bench the nebu it benches the boudicca prime all that stuff and you literally just run the two new archers together i think there's a lot of synergy there but we'll have to wait and see how those test results come out when cho is actually here and how he functions in the open field anyway guys i wanted to bring this video to you to give you my updated thoughts on shajar now that we've seen some early reports in the international version of rise of kingdoms my opinion has only changed slightly i think she's a little bit better than i initially thought after seeing some of the chinese server results i think she's maybe a little bit better but at the end of the day there's only a very specific type of player that should run her i think in a two army lineup and for everyone else i think she lands in the third slot most likely i could be proven wrong we'll see how upcoming kbks you know see how often she's actually used but because archers have so many good aoe commanders already it really makes it hard to bench any of them for shajar and so you know that's good news bad news right if you're an archer player and you've been waiting for this release you might be waiting a little bit longer for something that's a little bit better to come around but the good news is that for those of you that have been you know you're low on sculptures you don't want something meta to change the game right now well great news you might really not need Shajar at all especially if you're running one Archer March you definitely don't so that is my current thoughts and opinions on Shajar if you guys found this video useful drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video and comment down below your thoughts on Shajar did she surprise you now that she's in the game is she a little bit better than you thought is she worse than you thought is she exactly what you expected let me know what you think about her in the comment section below and don't forget to follow me over on Twitch because I will be doing some secret random live streams here and there and you won't want to miss them so go ahead and follow over there. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.